Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my July wrap up. So I am pretty happy with my July reading month. As always, I will start off with my statistics and I'm really happy because I managed to read a total of 20 books which is a really, really awesome number. My number for June, while 13 books, it was still really good, was quite down for me. So I'm really happy to be back up at 20 books. Like, that's a lot, and I'm really happy with that. So of the 20 books that I read, I read 16 novels, one novella, one novella bind up and two graphic novels. Again, of the 20 books that I read, I read 11 in physical format, four ebooks, and five audiobooks. And as always, excluding audiobooks, I read a total of nine books that I own and six books from the library. So I'm really happy with that. So once again, the number of books that I own that I read is higher than the number of books that I read from the library, which is a statistic that I always love to have in that kind of ratio. I read a total of 6,731 pages, which averaged out to a total of 217 pages per day. So as you all know, I've been trying to keep that average above 200 pages a day, so I've succeeded in that again, so I'm really happy. The longest book I read was 651 pages, and the shortest book that I read was 31 pages, which was the novella that I read. The highest star rating that I gave, I did give two five stars, but once again, they were rereads. So apart from that, I did also give two 4.5 star ratings. So I still haven't given a new to me book five stars this year, which is a little disappointing. And the lowest star rating that I gave was a 1.5 star. I also did put down a book um, this month, which I'll talk about when I get to it as well. Um, so overall, my average star rating for the month of July was 3.58 stars. I'm pretty happy with that, it being above 3.5 um, with the number of books that I read. I'm really, really happy with that. So those were um, the statistics. As always, I did film a mid-month wrap-up, which I'll link in the cards for you guys if you would like to check out. Um, so I talked about the first 10 books that I read from the 1st through the 15th in that video, and I will be talking about the 10 books that I read in the second half of the month from the 16th through the 31st in this video. So let's jump in and talk about those books. So the first book that I want to talk about is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. So I finally completed my reread of Harry Potter this month. <clears throat> which is really, really exciting. I'm really glad that I've got through this reread. It's something I've been wanting to do for ages, but at the same time, I'm kind of sad that the reread's over. I, of course, loved this. Um, I don't really know what to say. Of course, I gave it five stars. I totally adored this, as always, and I'm, like I said, I'm sad that the reread's over. Next, I completed Soldier by Julie Kagawa. This is the third book in the Talon series, and I listened to this on audiobook. It is once again narrated by four different um, narrators who are Caitlin Davies, McLeod Andrews, Chris Patton, and Tristan Morris. Um, there is one point of view in this that I find to be, like, one character's point of view that I just find quite boring. Um, I also feel like there's a lot of, like, a back and forth, but at the same time, it just it doesn't feel like anything's happening. Um, I also, the ending of this book made me really, really mad, but at the same time, I feel like the ending is a red herring, which makes me even more mad. Um, I am, like, enjoying the stories, like, kind of overall, but at the same time, I feel like just not a lot happens, especially because these books are, like, quite long for what they are. So, so I am enjoying it. I really want to find out kind of where the story is going and how it's going to end. In the end, I gave this one three stars. Next, I read my least favorite book of the month, and that was Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I hated this book. I hated every single character. I hated every single event. There was basically nothing in this book that I enjoyed. I found the writing really hard to read. This is probably one of the, as you know, I've been trying to read a lot more classics um, over the last like year or two and for the most part I found them like quite easy to get into and the writing not as hard as what I would have anticipated. This is the first one that I've probably read that I've really struggled with and it's, it didn't help that I wasn't enjoying the story. I can kind of get past the difficult writing if I'm really into the story and that was not the case with this one. I found myself, to be quite honest, skimming parts of the story and I just, oh, I hated this book so much. I did give it a 1.5 star rather than just a 1 star because I could see what the author was trying to do in kind of trying to talk about the, um, like, the differences in the way that men and women are treated in certain aspects of life, but 
I really didn't work for me and I just I hated this book so much. I know I keep saying but I really really didn't like it and as I said I gave it 1.5 stars. If you have read any other Thomas Hardy um, please do give me recommendations for what your preferred book by him is because I have heard people say good things about Thomas Hardy so I'm not sure if Tess of the Durbervilles was just not a good place to start and I may like more of his books, some of his other books better because I really obviously just did not like this one so give me your Thomas Hardy recommendations down below because I probably will give him another chance and read something else and see if I like that a little bit better but unfortunately this one just really wasn't for me. Next I read Giant Days Volume 2 by John Allison. This is the second book in the Giant Days graphic novel series obviously and I adored the first volume and I equally adored this volume. I love all three of their um, character, main characters and my favorite of them is actually constantly changing like at the end of the first volume I thought that Esther was probably my favorite but now I'm really not sure like I love I just love all three of the girls I really really do and I just find this so relatable and um it just feels really true to life and really relatable and it's just really really enjoyable and I really enjoyed this and I gave it 4.25 stars Next on audio, I listened to Deadfall by Anna Carey. This is the second and final book in the Blackbird duology. Um, this was okay. Um, it's narrated by Emma, Emma Galvin and it, it, like I said, it was okay. I find the plot quite interesting. This one has a super unnecessary love triangle and I don't know, I just, it's definitely not like one of my favorite series. I just, I didn't think this one was engaging as the first one. I just didn't love it. It was okay. I gave it three stars. Next, I finally picked up The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Ardas. This is, of course, the first book in the Raven Cycle. And this is about a main character named Blue who has always been told... So her, her entire family basically are psychics, but she's not. But she acts as kind of a microphone for psychics in that whenever she's around, psychic uh, feel things a lot stronger, things like that. But she's been told by basically every psychic she's ever met her entire life that if she kisses her true love, he will die... Um, and the story kind of kicks off from there and she meets these four um, boys from the local private school um, known as the Raven Boys and she kind of forms this friendship with them and there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. And I had heard from basically everyone who's read this that this is really hard to get into, that you really have to push through the first 100, 150 pages to really get into this. I didn't find that at all. I enjoyed this from the get-go. As soon as I picked it up, I really, really was enjoying this. I love all the characters and, like, the character relationships, like, the dynamics between all of the characters. I really, really enjoy. Um, the one thing I will say about this is that I found parts of the plot and, like, what's going on quite hard to follow. And I did really, really enjoy it. And in the end, I gave this 4.25 stars. Now we come to the books that I read for Booktubeathon. I did participate in Booktubeathon this year. I did film a vlog, but I didn't get it up when I wanted to. And now I'm not sure whether to post the um, a vlog because this wrap up and my TBR for next month um, will go up before I would get to post that. So if you do want me to post that vlog still, please let me know in the comments down below. But I did finish four books and complete three challenges during the Booktubeathon. Um, and the next four books, the final four books that I read in the month, are the books that I read during Booktubeathon. So the first of those was A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron. So this is a book that follows a dog, well, like different dogs. You are the story is told from the point of view of the dog. So, like, you are the dog in the book, and the dog is kind of reincarnated throughout the story, and you go th with him through different lives, but he is aware in each of the lives of the past lives. Like, he remembers each of his lives, um, and you, like, follow him through different situations and lives as a dog. I really, really loved this. My friend Emma has been wanting me to read this um, for ages and I am a dog lover and I just, uh, she's been absolutely badgering me so I picked it up and I really, really loved it. It was so beautiful and so cute. I cried like a bazillion times. I like ugly sobbed at the end. It made me miss my childhood dog Rusty so, so much. And it made me want a dog so, so bad. And I've always wanted a dog. But unfortunately, I'm not just in a position to have a dog right now, which is really sad. But I did really, really love this. And I gave it 4.5 stars. Next, I do just quickly want to mention the book that I put down during the month. So I was listening to 100 Years of Solitude by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez on audiobook. And I haven't DNF'd it, but I have completely removed it from my currently reading shelf um, with the idea that maybe I will come back to it in future in physical format. The audiobook is narrated by John Lee, and I really, really enjoyed his narration, actually. It's probably the, my favorite thing about the story as I was listening to it was 
the narrator. Like, I really enjoyed his voice and the way that he was telling the story. But unfortunately, this story is really complicated. There's a whole lot going on. And I was finding it really, really hard to follow exactly what was happening. I was about 28% of the way through this, I believe, when I decided to put it down because I read, tried to to read a plot summary on Wikipedia to try to figure out what was going on and I didn't know like a single thing that was mentioned in the plot summary and so I just figured I like there's no way by the time I got to the end of this that I was going to be able to feel good about saying that I'd read it when I really didn't know anything that was going on so I've just decided to put that to the side for now and I may come back to it one day but unfortunately it just really wasn't working for me on audiobook. Next I read The Truth We Bury by Barbara Taylor Sisal. This is one that I was approved for on NetGalley so thank you to NetGalley and the publishers so much for approving me to read this one. So this is a like drama mystery thriller about it, the, it has two points of views um, from two different women. One of the women has a son he is a grown son in his early 20s who is about to get married and one day a bridesmaid is found murdered in his apartment and he is missing and the other point of view is from the bride so the woman that this man is supposed to marry's mother and so you have both of their points of view and it is a mystery thriller in that we're trying to figure out what exactly happened like who killed this bridesmaid was it the son was it someone else where is the son what's going on and all of that but it is also really like a drama filled story in that like really I would say the main parts of the story are about these families and how they like deal with this issue um, because the mother of the bride didn't really like the neither of the mothers the mothers really like each other or like the person that their um, child was about to marry and then now that this obviously really traumatic thing has happened and it's about them dealing with it and I did really enjoy it I thought it was really interesting there is a lot of commentary in this on PTSD which I found extremely interesting and I really liked that it talked about different forms of PTSD and the different ways that you could maybe come to have PTSD and how PTSD does not just affect the person with PTSD but the person's um, loved ones and family and friends and all of those type of things. I did think that the mystery could have been more of like a slow unraveling because we were focused more on like the families and the family relationships and things like that. We didn't get as much like kind of then when the mystery was un like revealed at the end it was just kind of like a bleh, here's the mystery at the end as opposed to like kind of getting like little crumbs throughout that you could kind of try and solve yourself like you got a little bit but not as much as I would have liked but I did really enjoy it it was kind of, it was quite a quick fast paced read it's not too too long it's only just over 300 pages so you do get through it really quickly and I did really enjoy it and in the end I gave it 3.75 stars next on audiobook I listened to hashtag girlboss by Sophia Amoruso this is narrated by Sarah Jess Ostell and I did enjoy this um, I found it quite like an inspiring story so if you don't know this is a, a um uh, biography about um, Sophia Amoruso who is the CEO of Nasty Gal which is a clothing website which started originally as like a vintage um, secondhand clothing store on eBay and became like this huge brand and obviously earned her a lot of money and it became like a big business and the book's kind of about her path from starting the business and how it became this big you know multi-million dollar company. Um, I found it quite inspiring um, about, you know, she really did just start it from nothing and she did it all without borrowing any money and it is quite an inspiring story but at the same time, Sophia Amoruso really like toots her own horn a lot like, and like, fair enough I guess, like she has done an amazing thing and done really well so like it's good that she's like proud of her accomplishments but at the same time she comes across as quite like arrogant and a bit conceited which can be a little bit annoying to read at times. But I did actually really enjoy it. I really liked the narrator. I thought she did a great job. Um, the other thing is it does feel like sometimes it goes off on tangents. But overall, I did really enjoy it. And I gave this 3.75 stars. And the final book that I completed in the month of July is Edge of Reason by Helen Fielding. This is the second book in the Bridget Jones series and the sequel to Bridget Jones Diary. Um, I liked this. I enjoyed it. But it's definitely not as enjoyable to me as the first one. And... A lot of the stuff that really grated on me in the first one really, really grates on me in this second one, like with her real issues with body image and her weight and her weighing herself like every day, even though she's clearly not overweight. 
um, and it's just, it is really frustrating to like read and I definitely actually don't think that these books are anywhere near as good as the movie adaptations and I think that the second movie adaptation for Edge of Reason is nowhere near as good as the first movie adaptation but it's still like so much better than the book. Having said that, I did still enjoy it and I gave it this one three stars. So those are all of the books that I read in the month of July. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts. I would love to know what your favourite book that you read in July was. My favourite book I read in July was probably Amy and Rogers' Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, but I'd love to chat in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye guys!